and get this done. Three, two, one. Welcome, dear listeners. This is episode 98 of the Devon Dice podcast, recorded on the 23rd of the de- 23rd of December. No, it's not. Definitely not that day. <laughs> Recorded on the 23rd of April 2013. In this podcast, we will be oh, reviewing. 10 years old. Oh, did I? Oh, for <laughs> crying <laughs> out <2013. laughs> Recorded oh, on the 23rd of April 2023. In this podcast, we'll be reviewing Brass Birmingham. Uh, I'm your host, Joel Wright. Joining me on this podcast today is Nick Shaw, the podcast resident board game designer. Good evening, folks. And Dr. Jones, or Lewis. Dr. Lewis, let's go with that. Dr. Lewis, the podcast classic (laughs) board game player. (laughs) Hello, everyone. You can tell I'm really suffering. <laughs> My brain is not thinking straight. <laughs> uh, before we get on, just want to remind you that we're heading towards episode 100 very, very soon. And we would like questions in for that. So please send them in to any of our social sites. And let's get on with it. All right, guys, how are you doing? Yeah, good. Good. Lewis? Yeah. To this. Nice to hear from you. Yeah, doing well, yeah. <laughs> Feeling forward to yeah, good, good, good of you to um, let me know that uh, podcast is on. That's all very good. <laughs> we didn't exclude you from the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> you just pick, pick dates I wasn't available. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. And then went. Well, it doesn't matter if you can't make it, mate. Before anyone else. Is. <laughs> <laughs> ah, we missed you. We missed the moaning. Yeah, yeah exactly. There's no moaning but, at all. It was. I bet it was all you had was just. Yeah, con- constant streams of nonsense about very average games, I imagine. And probably Clank was mentioned at least 10 times an episode. Definitely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Mark's missed you as well. He looks forward to listening to you rant on the uh, on the podcast when he listens. <laughs> he does. That's, that's a highlight for him. <laughs> he told me himself. <laughs> he's, ta- he's ready to take notes so he can write his comments in reply. That's <laughs> it. He, also, he was also telling me how much um, how much he agrees with everything I say. And um, and, he th- and he, uh, how he felt that I was the most informed <laughs> member of the team, if I remember correctly. <laughs> All right. Well, that's your word against his, isn't it? <laughs> 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 anyway, moving along, let's go on with the news. So this bit of news actually was forgotten about uh, at the previous podcast because it happened before that. So, um, And it was really big news. Thank- finally, not thankfully, finally, uh, in the box games, have acknowledged that they are in dire straits and Neymar Games um, has come forward and acquired them and had a lengthy update in one of their Kickstarter um, updates of what is happening, what the process will be. I think it was in the Subterra 2 Kickstarter this was mentioned in. And by what I can understand is that they have all the... um, IPs that in the box games had designed and owned and they had copies of Subterra 2 for backers but backers had to make a contribution for shipping or be willing to donate their games to name our games to sell on as um, basically recouping some of the the, um, funds back so, kind of brings a close that's, to that's good the news. I, good good yeah. news to the backers. I think it's not terror too. Um, the one downside is that the the Alba project book um, was not so um, not so good because it hadn't been produced yet. So no. there was oh, wait, no can stock I, that you can sell. But can I just stop sub- you there? They they made a sub terror two. Yes. What? I've got. Well, I mean, the, the subterra Joel that that we played for about forty five minutes, in which we sat around waiting for you to roll a six. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because you were stuck that's the joy of the game. You're missing the joy of the game, Lewis. He was stuck down <laughs> some ravine and needs to throw a rope or something yeah. absolutely banal. Whittle a rope out of uh, human hair. It, and just just keep rolling a 
six and we, none of us could do anything until we've done that and we sat on for 45 <laughs> minutes and then died that game was absolutely terrible they made a number two of that they did make no a wonder they're bankrupt bloody <laughs> hell <laughs> oh we've missed you Lewis. Okay. we've missed you yeah, so like much <laughs> yeah this, i mean that is well that's just a fact like, that's not being being grumpy or like pessimistic. we literally sat around for 40 minutes you had to throw a six which you continually failed to do <laughs> But, and it didn't, didn't happen, and then we died. Like that's just the end of the game. It was terrible. Nothing else happened. Some people really do like it. Yeah, it's got a seven point four rating on BGG, so yeah. it's a decently it high did, rating. Did I played it a few times? And it's the classic, think... classic Kickstarter self-affirming, isn't it? You know, once yeah. you pay, once, <laughs> when you pay for a Kickstarter, you have to give it a good review, or you're just shooting yourself in the foot. <laughs> yeah. How are you going to sell well. it on? That's a Joel classic. That is. I don't know why. That um rated that as now. Let's have a look. Uh, this is suspense is going to kill everyone without me looking it up. <laughs> oh, I didn't rate it. What did I? What did I rate it? Have a look as well. Sorry, oh, I'm rating it either. Oh, okay. I can't rate it anything more than a one. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be better than Monopoly. Come on. I mean, it's the same as Monopoly. We were sat around rolling dice, waiting for the right number to come up. I mean, that's just that's Monopoly. It boiled down to a game of Monopoly. It was exactly the same game. I am going to rate it a 6.5. I'd say that's a fair rating. Yeah. yeah. I've only Lewis played it has, once, but I, Lewis has it got was, some... It was right. 5! <laughs> I, I mean, I, Although, I, 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 Joe, you play that game with me. There's no way that game was 6.5. Again, you're being blind. I, I enjoyed fight. some aspects it. of it. I, did it I, I played it a few times and enjoyed it. Um, it was like down to sometimes it is, dice rolling. It's group dependent though as well. I think you, it you is, need the right uh, group and the right frame of mind to, to play it. I just found like, uh, one of the rating comments in the uh, on Board Game Geek was Clank is orders of magnitude better than this. <laughs> so, hey, we got the Clank link to the game. <laughs> was, that Joel's, was that Joel's comment? <laughs> it wasn't Joel's one. Although there is someone from the UK saying dreadfully dull and awful. So yeah, oh, it that's, is. That's Lewis. That exactly comment. what it was. <laughs> that was <really> Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with Rating that. It a one. I'm very clever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, dear. I like reading the really? comments. The tens and the ones are always so funny. I just, I don't, have, I don't ever give you anything a ten. Nothing is a ten. Surely you must have one that must be a ten to be your number one game. Nothing is a ten, but there are a lot of very strong nine point fives. Like nothing okay. is perfect. Nothing can, nothing can be, nothing can be a ten in my mind. Yeah, it would imply absolutely perfect. Yeah, like that, you can't. Nothing is perfect. Will never change perfect. your opinion, etc. Hmm. Oh, well, anyway, uh, good news for some anyway, backers. Not so good news yeah. for Alba backers. Maybe they might come around and actually print it out, and Sam might get his copy of Alba. Yeah, um, never I know. would argue that's bad news for Subterra to backers because. That's they're going to get life. the game. They're never going to get it back. <laughs> they were saved. Well, they were actually. Some people are actually saying they could pick up Subterra Two cheaper at the shops because it was being released at the shops way before it was even announced. Mm. Namor Games had yeah. acquired it um, because yeah. they were trying to recruit some of funds back. Mm. Um, it's Naylor Games, isn't it? Naylor. Oh, Naylor Naylor. Games. Naylor. Sorry. Naylor, yeah. yeah. Sorry, that's my good. dyslexia. Very continue. good. All right, let's move on. Uh, Lewis, what was the worst game I purchased from Essen when we went back in 2017? 16? The worst, the worst game. 17. Let me have a little think. Um, there was the, there was the game that, 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 um, was about building roller coasters with uh, cardboard, <laughs> which was not a game and mostly didn't work with the marbles running down the cardboard. That Correct. was, that was pretty poor. Yeah, and... I got it right, did I? It's an yep. answer. And you never guess yeah. what? What? It's coming back out. What? But I mean, have now... they made the game better? Uh, well, you can take. I didn't put a link in here. Um... Roller coaster. It, was called... it wasn't coaster called Roller Coaster Rush before, was it? No, it was called um, Coaster Park. But again, like the concept was a good idea. Have they? But the, there was just no actual game to it before like like the, the actual game was just pick some pieces and then you got to try and make a roller coaster but it was just never worked like without a cardboard and the, the cardboard bits yeah. so work. it is funny because like 
when it got pushed um because i got an email sent from pandasaurus games and they said oh look we got roller coaster park rush coming and i was like that looks oddly familiar and then i started <laughs> looking at it i was like uh it's the same game but now they're using uh, plastic pieces instead of cardboard yeah yeah the piece of the roller coaster are now plastic i can see well that would work a bit better because the cardboard used to bend and everything but have they made doesn't it they've made the actual game any better no it's still the same mechanics as what it was oh, before God, it was, oh, it, like there wasn't even any mechanics it was just it was well, just there's, oh there's the draft a piece. mechanic yeah yeah but it was then just you, like pick a piece wasn't it yeah and then you roll your marble down and you see how far it gets down to the down and you score your flags and that's your kind of points. So oh. it's... Um, that sounds good. <laughs> I never said it made it any better. <laughs> yeah, I just, I, I'm trying not to be all negative. Can you put some good games on here in a minute? <laughs> oh, we're getting there. Uh, but I mean, Again, this is you know, when they did bring that out, why, the, the why original one. Um, yeah. I also picked up the um, oh, I now can't think what it's called, but basically, it's like a puzzle game where you're building a roller coaster simulation and you had to, like, you're given the pieces and then you were shown where it starts and where it ends, and you had to build it with these pieces and then roll down the this kind of ball on a cart thing um it's kind of a solo puzzle kind of game it's not really a board game but it was that it oh. was using plastic pieces and you you yeah can raise it up as high as you I need to be that lesson you got that as i oh, sure you thought you got that you yeah because I, I got it for my uh oh, I've, I've my net my niece has still got it it was like a puzzle and it gave you like certain pieces yes and certain uh, like the certain pieces in certain positions, and you had extra pieces. And you had to work out with how the extra pieces fit in to make it get to a certain point. And stuff it was like awesome, that. wasn't it? Because you you figure it out, it was and good. Then you launch launch it off, and you can say, yes, that worked right. Next puzzle. Um, yeah. And like me and my boy spent ages going through that, and I was thinking, yeah. this is what Coaster Park should have been, really. Oh. Yeah, Using yeah. plastic pieces, I it would have probably well, actually, I don't know. This was cheap compared to Coaster Park, as I remember. But um, but yeah, it's called Roller Coaster people. Challenge. That's it. Um, yeah. and this is kind of more or less what it is, but it's now just solid blocks, plastic. Oh, um, just, yeah, let's move on. Let's move, move on. on. Yeah, time is short. Uh, we can't waste time against that. Firefly tenth anniversary is being released on GameFounds. You get everything that they've released before and more, and a box. So if you missed out on the Firefly, you can now. But chase this and get everything. I'm really tempted by that. Now there you go then. I know, I but it. isn't it terrible? I feel like people love it, but it's terrible. Isn't that like it's just like a? a I am. Um, like oh, I've never played the game. I don't know. I played it. No, a couple I've never of played times, it either. And it's 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 a, it's a simple kind of well, it's kind of a sandbox game. Mm. Mostly, yeah. it's a pick yeah. up and deliver. But there is other missions in there where you have to go and get on, uh, go to certain planets and do stuff, or go to and get on the raiders' ship, or get on the Imperial. I can't. There's two other big ships flying around, and um, board those and do something. So there's other kind of task in it, but it is mostly kind of pick up and deliver. Um, yeah. People, some it's one of those people that have got it, love it, like Sam, um, and it. Um, and he's got all the stuff. It has the same <laughs> rating yeah. as um, Subterra, just to warn you there. <laughs> oh, and Sam likes it as well. 7.4. Yeah, <laughs> if Sam likes it, I'm not, I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it if Sam likes it. <laughs> That's, that goes without saying. It comes to different space. That's he's, what got, it is, that? he's got yeah. terrible taste in games, so there's no point. <laughs> <laughs> nice. How much is it? Yeah. Oh, well, there's not it released. Is. It's 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 still coming. They've announced it. Oh, it's still coming. Yeah, ten million dollars. Probably. <laughs> it's all in a nice little oh. box, though, isn't it? That is a nice looking box. I think maybe I should at least watch like the Firefly TV program first, if I even like the genre. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's worth doing. Yeah. Can't believe you've not even watched <laughs> that. Not, literally, I have no idea why why I'm even interested. But like, for some reason, I really am. I have no idea. <laughs> 
It doesn't make any sense. I don't know. I don't like the TV program. I don't like pick up and deliver games. I don't particularly like sandbox games. It's the ideal what? game for you, Lewis. It's ideal. <laughs> Why am I like? Oh, I, I should definitely pay a few hundred quid for this. Mm. <laughs> How much is it? What? What's oh, wrong with dear. me? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you're just yeah, hoping for a decent game to finally turn up. Yeah, that would be good, wouldn't it? <laughs> I've already uh, got a few decent games. Guys. It's all right. So in news, Sam was right section, everyone does get 100 points in Ark Nova. Yeah. yeah. That'll help me win, guaranteed. (laughs) What happens? (laughs) So, Louis, uh, you know Ark Nova's now on Board Game Arena? I mean, yeah, I've I've been told that you can play board games on on computers. I don't know why I'm going to do it, but I believe it happens, yeah. (laughs) Anyway, so Mark Nova's finally made it onto Board Game Arena. It's a still in only alpha um, mode. Um, Mm. But what I didn't realise, and Sam pointed this out on the last episode, is that they've now changed the scoring. So instead of people getting negative points, everyone apparently gets 100 points. So everyone gets positive points at the end of the game. Um, Oh, uh, to uh, appease the people that oh. don't like scoring the negative snowflakes, it's, it's also snowflakes. to make the calculations slightly easier. Uh, the Rather snowflakes. than working out what subtracting one from the other in the right direction, you just add yeah. the two scores together and it gives the answer. Um, I'm amazed yeah. somebody hasn't come along and ruined patchwork for that. The amount of negative scores <laughs> that come out of that game. I'm amazed that I'm amazed that game managed oh, to survive. That's true. It. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's literally prime, just adding 100 points. Good. So, um, yeah, after they've... the last episode, I had to go on Board Game Arena because I was like, Sam mentioned it, and then mm. we were like, sure, that's not like an April fool. So I went on Board Game Arena, found the, uh, art- uh, found the uh, forum post, which is actually from the designers, and they made two rules changes, and one of them was this scoring uh, rule change. But it's caused a lot of controversy with <laughs> fans of the game. <laughs> and it, no, no, um, no, they're not the snowflakes. They're the originals. They're the originals. They're the OGs. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm with the OGs. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Nick pointed out how massive this forum has now kicked off, and we'll put a link in the in the Brilliant. show notes so you can read along yourself. But um, even has board anyone, game arena has anyone been referred. Has anyone been referred to as? A- Nas Nick Gordon tested. Not quite. It, it it is almost getting to that stage. So I think they've calmed <laughs> down now. But the mid the mid, mid, mid uh, it's up to nine pages of post now. But yeah, around about the mid hundreds in the posts they mm-hmm. were getting almost to that point. Yeah, so uh, it's quite entertaining to uh, read along with uh, some of the comments. Now, people. One guy even um, said he's um, he's uh, cancelled his cancelled his, his BJ yeah. Premier membership. Yeah. Because of it, <laughs> do you know what? He's cancelled really his PGG. Oh, he's cancelled his what? His board game arena membership. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it's probably because he realised that computers are for computer games because computer games are much better <laughs> than computers, and, if, and board games are much better than real life with real people. That's, that's the real reason, I imagine. But I imagine he's not banging on about it, so it's fine. <laughs> no, he didn't want to tell anyone. He just like left a left a comment in the yeah. post. Let, yeah, let exactly. the whole 10 million <laughs> I users it, of Board Game lad. Arena know. I'm a full supporter of him and his actions. <laughs> I, 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 support, I support his strike. Oh, dear. <laughs> I don't care. I enjoy, I'm enjoying the game so far. On, a, on there. So, yeah, it doesn't uh, matter who wins at the end of the, end of the, end of the game. Um, mm. and, and it for just tells you who's won. That's what it is. And to let everyone know, when we were playing Ark Nova, the three of us, not Lewis, because he doesn't know anything about it. Um, I won. I've played it with you. <laughs> on, you on board game arena. Board game, oh, board game arena. Uh, it doesn't count on board game arena. <laughs> That's not real. Uh, you can't look, if you can't look your opponent in the eye and read their next move, it doesn't count. Oh, I can do that, all right. <laughs> um, yeah. And I had one of those moments where I'd done every, pretty much done everything on uh, my board, filled the, filled the zoo up. Got to the end of the university track, got all my, all the tokens on the places on my uh, player board. It was a full full Monty, except for I didn't get to remove all the cubes. But um, so yeah, and I won. I didn't. Did I say that before? I don't know. I can't remember. Anyway, moving that. along. <laughs> you rub it in. That's it. <laughs> Sam came second. 
Um, <laughs> I was a distant third. Reprint news. One of my favourite classic games I've just learned is getting a reprint through the Ooh, desert. Which one, Joel? Through the desert. Uh, classic Canizia game. Yeah. Through um, the desert. That is a that is a strong game. I like your mm. version though. That looks like it comes from like the yeah. That's why I never picked up <laughs> Fantasy Flight's redo of it. Because it was pretty much my game, except for on the back of the board they had a a a different map with a river going through it. So I was like, I don't really want to pay for that when I've got my nice old classic right. copy. But all player re releasing it. <clears throat> it's gonna be on Kickstarter along with two other games. And they're gonna have some e- extras in it. Um to help boost it out. Done by Kinexium himself, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I don't think it's out until November, I want to say, they said. But we will see. Uh, mm. It's Kickstarter in October. October. Yeah. Oh, it's close. October, November, yeah. So, yeah. And they say the price point's going to be around $39, so it's still a decent price point. Mm. I don't believe it. You, you, haven't, you haven't seen the $250 shipping that they're going to... Well, that is the thing, end. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Dipping. I'm not um, paying for the boat. <laughs> so yeah and there's actually quite a lot of um old classics being reprinted as i was looking through board game geek and looking at their news i was that's like well, that's an old classic that's a classic that's been and i was just like wow there's a this is like kind of a renaissance period for classic games being reprinted so have a look at they run out of ideas. They just they yeah. have to reprint them. To... <laughs> well, it's like it's like I said the other day. Like we keep kind of trying to reinvent the wheel when a lot of people haven't even enjoyed the original wheel. Mm, mm, yeah, that is true. And the wheel is a great. A lot of people have missed a lot of these. Just enjoy the scooter <laughs> for what it is. That's what I always say. You don't need to add a motor to it just yet. <laughs> anyway. Master a skateboard. Yeah, um, the company Funko, who make the Funko Pop toys, um, they have announced uh, four new Indiana Jones IP games, um, which I don't know much about. I haven't looked at much of them yet, but these are uh, Sands of Adventure, Throw Me the Idol, Cryptic Puzzles and Pathway Adventures, and Something's Wild. Um, And Joel, you were saying that some of these you think are based on existing designs which they've just put new th- ips on top of and tweak the rules yeah so i think like um, you say the cryptic the one cryptic puzzles yeah, yeah they've got a, a star trek one coming out which also means that there's going to be probably other ones they've got they've got ips for um yeah so yeah, yeah expect a deluge of um cryptic ip name goes here kind of scenario coming out from <laughs> funko verse um I don't mind. The Funkoverse do okay-ish games. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, the first one, Sands of Time, is designed by the Prospero Hall design team. So that yeah. is Yeah, and it is looks a good really science. cool because it's got this kind of like sand timer, um, mecha- sand timer mechanism where it will drop all the yeah. stuff on it. It looks like some kind, kind it of flips. Mousetrap. Yeah, the time, are you, you're putting like people in the buckets or something in the buckets and it flips it at some point. I think they're gems, aren't there. they? <clears throat> they could be gems. It's hard to tell from the imaging, but yeah, they could be gems. But I don't know what the yeah, um, purpose of it is, apart from well, yeah, we don't know much yet. Funky on the table, but so yeah, <laughs> look out for that a deluge of um, IP games coming from Funkoverse. Which Star Trek IP are they using? Uh, the original, I think it was uh, original series. Oh, Ooh, I know. <laughs> uh, I'm a fan. Yeah. It's it's definitely the weakest of all of them. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I get some yeah. some fool who's going to jump in with that. Oh, that's DS Nine. It's like, are you joking? The Dominion War was the most interesting thing that ever happened. But there you go. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Voyager was rubbish. What an absolute joke. Seven of Nine was a hero. Oh. Still is. <laughs> if you the uh, new Picard made series. my teenage years. I'm loving uh, the new Picard series. Yeah. The series oh, three is so absolutely out of this world. I'm just like, it is, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I didn't mind. I, the first one's a bit boring. I thought second one, I didn't mind. Everyone was hating on that. I, I hate the second. I didn't mind it. I like I the first two series. 
But first the one third was season. first one was yeah yeah first one was slow mm. like once you got past the first couple of episodes you actually got into it and then it got quite good second one was meh I I just I don't like a multiverse nonsense I just it's all overdone now and they were the doing the time travel trope it. again weren't they as well so. yeah and it's always been it's already been done with that other one as well I was like oh god we've done this already I'm a bit bored um and then um. And then they brought, and then the third one, they've absolutely smashed us. So good. It's so yeah, good. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, it's like a love song to all the fans of Next mm. Generation, oh, isn't it? Me. Me. They're pulling up the nostalgia. <laughs> it is <laughs> bringing everything in. Right? Taking the yes, best part Wolf is back. of yes. everything I love about Star Trek Georgie's and put it in the one series. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, this is any other business. We, we... Yeah, oh, yeah, sorry. 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 Like, yeah, this is the last one. Any other business. <laughs> Indiana Jones games. Right. What's next? Right. Good. Um, <laughs> crowdfunding. Yeah. So, Fractured Skies is actually um, in, our Nick is involved in this on the solo mode. So, he's not he didn't want to announce it, but it looks like a good game. He's only involved in the solo um, aspect of it, um, so he can tell you more about the game. It does look cool. I think your kids will like it, Lewis. But it's a giant octopus. <laughs> no, it does have a giant octopus. It's true. Yeah. So, um, so, so this, yeah. this, is a, this is a this is a game. It's um it's it's an area control game um where you are using blind not blind bidding but um um hidden uh, troop deployment to do the area control, um and you can only deploy three of your twelve tokens, which are valued between zero and, tw- and ten, um and the total amount you can deploy that has to be no higher than ten, so you're limited by what you can actually put down. Um, and you're vying for these areas which give you star for which points or resources and the resources that you build fortresses which boost your power and markets which boost your resources um and you um the yeah it's it's very much about the um hidden deployment and trying to outthink your opponents about what they're bidding for on which bits um you can peek at some hidden areas which are going to have to be revealed each round. Um, there are objectives that you can peek at, which are resolved every round. Um, and they've, they've done it. It's a, a classic Ivy Studios, beautiful production for the Kickstarter. Um, the retail will have just standard components, but the the, um, the deluxe version is very, very pretty. They've got little um, airship miniatures, which have got magnets on, which magnetize to the tokens. So you can just click them in and pop them on the board. Um, and all little mini fortresses and markets it's very pretty so if you like area control and you like hidden kind of bluffing um then yeah could be a game for you have a look yeah what's interesting is that they state right from the beginning there's no stretch goals nothing like that the only thing is if you don't back this and you back at like super deluxe edition then you won't get all well you basically won't get the super deluxe edition ever again this is kickstart exclusive yeah. only um, which only means um, you get painted miniatures, you get the magnetic um, airships, uh, holographic objective cards, a hollow foil box, I mean, not holographic, hollow foil, um, and black magic custom organizer. So, yeah, if you're, if you're one of those people that suffer with FOMO and want all the extra goodies, then you've got eight yeah. days to make that decision. Maybe they, one of the nice little components, out. one of the nice ones, which you, you said holographic, there's actually there's lenticular cards. They've got some of the cards for the Super Deluxe, which are the ones where you move the card back and forth. It's oh, looked like yes. a hologram, but it's a cheap way yeah. of doing it. Um, yeah, so that's what they are. They're called, which I've, I've never seen in any game before, no. lenticular cards. So really interesting idea. Um, I don't know if it's going to make them the quality of I don't know what they're going to feel like. Um, but you don't really have to shuffle them very much. So we'll see. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Fun. Interesting, Lewis. Are we moving on. It look it looks um very beautiful. Does doesn't it? Um yeah. I'm not sure my kids would like it. Area control is is classic. It is it, classic it's on a weight level probably the same weight as El Grande. Okay. Probably yeah. a, maybe a little less, but but with the the blind bidding it's um, slightly different yeah how about that's a that's a strong strong comparison you slipped in there that's a 
Well, it's mm. a comparison to the mechanics. I know, I know, I know. I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> and thematically, completely different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Santorini Co-op and Deluxe a version is now on Kickstarter. I uh, I did get the first edition when they brought it out. Um, played it, enjoyed it, but after a while got a bit bored and got mm. rid of it. But now they're bringing out a new one. And you can play yep. co-op with, with the Pantheon yeah. included and the co-op version. Hmm. Which yeah. is interesting. I've only played this once or twice, I think the original. Um, and it's very clever two-player back and forth. Mm-hmm. Um kind of almost abstract game there's not yeah. really a theme in there it's just building buildings and moving the people around um it was perfectly yeah. nice i'm not sure i would want to play it oh, so too some... often but some... i think yeah i think like it was definitely lacking changes. legs wasn't it when, yeah I, which i, I think really is what they're addressing it. with the having pantheon included with it which gives you the extra god cards and things um and then the co-op yeah. version which i think we were a, a very interesting um tweak to how it plays Ah, so the co-op mm. mode is basically a ring binder adventure book where you yeah, flip really over um, and you move through like scenarios, puzzles. Yeah. It's like an, yeah. Yeah, a yeah, never changing like chess map. puzzles, chess puzzles in the back of the newspaper, isn't it? That sort of thing. Yeah, because the game is very chess-like. <laughs> yes. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. Mm. Ah, that's kind of so cool. They've, they've... Mm. Nice idea. It is very nice. Awesome. So it's nice. So yeah. uh, it might be finished by the time this comes out. So, uh, but they may have late pledging. Sorry, yeah. it's always worth. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Finishes in four days next. from date recording. So, <laughs> does depends how quickly Joel can edit. <laughs> yeah, at this rate, it'll not be very close. quick. <laughs> uh, right, I'm sure Nick just puts this in his make me try and um, say it. Got to try and pronounce. <laughs> this is Teotihuacan, City of Gods, yeah. uh, which came out 2018, I want to say. Um, and this is the a deluxe master set that Board and Dice are bringing out. Um, and Teotihuacan is uh, classic Daniel Tassini, one of the T games, uh, which is uh, well liked. It's in the BGG Top 100, um, and this is a very nicely deluxified version with kind of thicker tiles, um, wooden much nicer thick wooden um components nice it looks like screen printed dice and meeples uh nice draw bags much bigger map with everything included the, and it has all the expansions included as well um have you some... played this lewis i don't think i have uh, i think this is a game for you i think you might like it it's yeah, yeah. it's it's a it's, Ron- um, it's rondelle kind of work- mechanic it's a yeah dice work placement rondelle hmm and building up a pyramid and things. Yeah. It does look nice and meaty. It so, is yeah. meaty. So it's in kind of in the same vein as the um, Snowdonia Deluxe that they did. Uh, um, yeah. It's kind of the same box size, um, I think, and kind of the same um, beautification of it, uh, and probably the same price point as well. Uh, oh, but they yeah. are, they've got various kind of pledge levels where you can just buy the big box if you want to, to put all your existing ones in. Which is actually a oh, pretty good. reasonable price. Um, Ooh, what I want to a... do is is buy a cardboard box. <laughs> yes, an empty box <laughs> for fifty pound delivered. So that, yeah, I mean that's eighteen it's, euros it's... for the box. But yeah, you don't you do have to pay shipping on top of that. Exactly. No yeah. um, you can buy a, a double sided neoprene play mat just on its own if you wanted to. You can buy just the upgraded bits, um, or you can buy the whole thing. And the whole thing is one hundred nineteen euros, one hundred seven pounds. Get, get um, there, is a, there is an all-in pledge which gets you everything, including the play mats and all the extra bits, which is 179 euros. So the deluxe version doesn't come with the play mats. No, no. They never usually do. A lot of them don't. No, yeah. and they don't. They don't tend to be. You, you can't fit them in the box anyway. Usually the play mats. Yeah, separate. Uh, yeah. The, um, I don't like a play mat anyway. And last and not least, this is something Nick brought forward. So uh, I'll let him do this. Yeah. So this is uh, Awaken Realms. Um, and bringing out what they're calling story dice, which are very, very beautiful um, resin set dice for f- some of their games and for um, Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition compatible. Um, they are just—they are very beautiful, and they are ridiculously expensive. Mm, so they are. We're on there. Uh, the story. So the the core box, which is for D and D Fifth Edition, is seventy nine dollars, mm. and that's just for a set of twenty 
polyhedral dice. Um, and then you've got all these other add-ons you can add on for all their other other, other games in their, um, their line, um, which I'm just trying to find now by scrolling enough. So ISS Vanguard, Nemesis, um, Tainted Grail, other fields. Um, you can buy yeah. these beautifully crafted dice, and they do look absolutely beautiful. Um, and the the add-ons are not that expensive. They're like ten ten dollars for these extra ones for the for the games. Um, and you can get a nice wooden box to keep things in as well. Uh, so it is kind of kind of fun if you have huge amounts of cash to throw around. Then this looks like a very pretty one if you want, like if you'd like your dice and you have lots of money. Hmm. They are beautiful, uh, but they haven't gotten for any games that I like. And play yeah, that is a problem. But same here. They haven't got oh yeah, you have to be a fan own. of Welcome Round. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, you make something from for something that I really like, and I might be uh, interested. I don't know. They got um, they got some like normal, well, kind of normal dice. Dreamy Mystic RPG dice for only nineteen dollars. I don't. I don't want that. <laughs> I want the crazy beautiful dice for like, I don't know, it's a game that I play, like Eclipse. If they had like a Eclipse one. <laughs> Did you get a set of dice with your um, table? Yes. Yeah, I got two sets of dice on my table, yeah. Oh, yeah, you did, didn't you? Yeah, they gave me two boxes, it was kind. Scammy boxes. They're, nice set. They're nice sets of dice, aren't they? Oh, they're all right, except for it's really hard to see. <laughs> There's so much detail and white on it, it's just like, ah, what number's that? I got multiple oh. colours. So I can't think. I haven't really used them. No, neither. Most of the games that I have come come with the dice. Really, I I find that as quite an important prerequisite of a game. Very good. They are beautiful dice. They are. Uh, da, 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 da. Right. Moving on to what we played. Um, Nick, do you want to do one? Yeah. Uh, so uh, game night the other day. Um, I managed to get played uh, Mansions of Madness, second edition ah. uh, from 2016. Yeah, uh, I remember that. Designed by Nikki Valens. Uh, this is a fantasy flight game. Um, and this is an app driven uh, co op um, set in the Cthulhu mythos. Um, so, the same universe as Eldritch Horror and Elder Sign. Um, mm. The first time I've played a game really in this genre, I would say, mm-hmm. uh, or this 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 theme, because um, I'm, I'm not really fussed by Eldritch Horror theme. No. Um, but we, so we played it five, six, six player, I think it was. Um, four or five player. It was uh, I enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. We 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 had a limited window of about an hour and a half. I think we had to play it in, um, and so we picked one of the shorter missions um, from the many missions you can pick from, which was one that they were stuck in a jungle that had taken over this um, this house because they've triggered a curse. Um, and we That's had to sick. walk around. Walk, we had to wander around trying to find the right artifacts to get back and cure the people, and then reverse the curse. Uh, we managed to do it just in the nick of time. Um, Hero. We did kind of have to tweak a few rules to allow us to finish it in time um, to do that. But uh, it was a lot. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, the app-driven part of it worked nicely. Um, mm. The the cooperative bit was fine. We you know there was there was no alpha gaming really. It was a lot of discussion around the table. This this was one of like the the original app-driven games, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And it was it, it caused much controversy at the time. I think it was like along the was it a similar sort of time as uh, um uh what was that one um it's based on that computer game that turn based computer game where you got Defend Earth against the um uh, uh, XCOM XCOM yeah yeah, yeah. was that yeah it was about the same time yeah mm. was it I saw sure XCOM was twenty twenty fifteen was XCOM there you go mm. yeah because that was one of the very first. Um, app driven yeah that's games. It. when was your one from 2016 so it's just a year after i was yeah oh, guys wow. yeah there was very similar thought, time yeah i thought scom was a lot sooner but yeah yeah is that far away no joe wood yeah. is old <laughs> <laughs> we're doing it for too long i'm not i'm not, I'm not denying it <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, so I enjoyed it. It was um it was good. Um I uh, I would like to try some of the other scenarios to see how mm. different they are. Um I get the feeling you it might get a bit samey if I they aren't varied enough. Um, because one. they had like 30 different scenarios something there's, there's a lot of them. Mm. Um the guy who taught us uh, is one of the in, in our playtest group Aaron um, and he loves it. He's got all, all the stuff for it all the expansions and stuff. Um 
so he, yeah, he, he was very keen on playing. Um, so he was a very enthusiastic teacher, which was good, which helped. Um, but yeah, I'd like to I'd like to try a few more scenarios and see what else it's got. It always it always looked far too narrative rather than gameplay driven when I looked at it. How did it does it was the it, it does I mean the, well you could ignore the narrative entirely and just do the mechanics and it would still work perfectly fine. Um, but the narrative does add a lot to the experience. You have to if you have to get into the story. I mean, uh, saying it's a horror and horror mystery, I, I was not scared in any point. I don't think it's you're to hardcore, me, really. mate. You're hardcore. Hardcore, man. Hardcore. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, did, did I feel that my characters were ever under threat? No, not really. Um, I mean, there there were bits where you you some of the narrative says you hear screaming through the wall and stuff, um, and you go, oh, maybe we don't want to go in there for a bit until we. Do we uh, heal up a bit? Um, yeah, screaming. But the, the the narrative does uh, does add to it. Um, I mean, it says it's an immersive app guide. Um, it's just it's just you, know, you have to read out the the text. It doesn't read it to you. Doesn't read um, it to you. So yeah. we had to do our own voices for things, which is quite funny. Um, um, but yeah, I mean, it it adds to the um, experience having that narrative there. But mechanically, it was perfectly right as well. Perfectly good, nice, not too difficult, but not too easy co-op. Mm. Some interesting puzzles okay. to solve along the way. Okay. This actually reminds me of a um, a news article I was meant to put in and completely forgot all about it. So there was this time where every game pretty much that was coming out was based on Cthulhu or the uh, mm. Lovecraft it was, universe. It was just after the, the IP copyright ended, wasn't it, I think? Yeah, and, and it so just kind of fell out at the time. Out. Everything, everything to Cthulhu game kind of thing, and I'm not really big into Cthulhu. I mean, it's it's all right, but it's like, but some people are mad on it and absolutely love it. Mm. But now I think we're in a period that everything's a Marvel game now, because yes. um, <laughs> that's because you just yeah. buy them all, Joel. Just everything in your house is Marvel now. <laughs> well, there was a point where I wish I was like, why can't they just do a Marvel game? There's like, so, so it doesn't need to be Cthulhu all the time, but now. My wish is coming true. <laughs> I'm feeling a bit bad. In the other direction. Uh, and Fantasy <laughs> Flight have announced Marvel Dagger. Oh, well, none, yeah, none of the Marvel acronyms. Um, they're always kind of nonsense, yeah. aren't they, when you get into them? Like... Uh, and it's basically Eldritch Horror, okay, oh, yeah. but yeah. done with Marvel. So you're trying to save the world, and you've got a world map, and you've got little location spots, and you're going to have baddies and henchmen and everything pop up like they do the monsters in Cthulhu. Yeah, it's it's um, a rethink really, isn't it? It's it is basically a rethink of Eldritch Horror. Um, which is quite cool. Hey, if it's I got the marble thing on, then I'm yeah, sure you I might still it. buy it. Yeah, I'll definitely buy it. Not, not might, already bought, mate. Oh, you got your name on it. <laughs> <We ordered>. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to put it as want to buy on my list. Fine, it's done. <laughs> <laughs> Added oh, to dear. collection. Everyone oh happy? dear, they've done you. <laughs> In fairness, I think I like theme does matter, doesn't it? Because like I'm sure there are loads of Eldritch horror games where I and like all that Cthulhu and stuff where I've looked and gone, oh no. I just I don't know why. I'm just not really a fan of that Lovecraftian world. It just doesn't do anything for me. Mm. I, I, yeah, same here. No I'm not really why. fast by it. I don't yeah. know why. I don't know what it's don't know what it's done to hurt me so much, but apparently I'm quite I, offended by it. I don't think it's offended, it's just like just no interest in the subject kind of thing, but people that yeah, absolutely soak in it. all of it and read all the books mm. and read all the lore yeah. to it and um so anyway. well, some people say that about Marvel, Joel. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was literally about to say they want to watch some of the Marvel yeah. films. They need to get Disney Plus is what they want. <laughs> That's a story. Lewis, what have you been playing? Well, I'm very good of you to no, ask. Not Cthulhu. <laughs> it's, it, it's not Cthulhu. It's not Cthulhu. Surprising. Now, Joel, I, I'm going to ask you to cast your mind back to um, a few years ago when you and I backed a Kickstarter full of minis. Um, yeah. Um, we're which, starting with course, this one, are we? Yeah, with, yeah with, with, with a game called Monumental. Yeah. That? We were very excited yeah. about it. <laughs> It was a um, uh, it was a deck builder, but like a civ- civilization deck builder, mm-hmm. um, and um, 
and then you and I, I think we we got it and we were excited. And I think I think you came over my house to play a game. We, we well, yeah, we game. played it at the pub, and then um, literally, I think the weekend before COVID like locked everything down, I popped around your house um, to play. We had another game, a game with it. yeah, and had another yeah. game. And I and I think I'm still waiting for you to finish your first turn, um, <laughs> because for for some. Very, very odd reason. Um, they decided to make the game where you don't take turns. One person sort of plays their entire game. Yeah. Uh, and then the other person does it. And there's about an hour break in between each of these things happening. And it was um, horrendous. Painful. And yeah. It was painful. The problem was, is the game was actually really quite interesting. It had some very interesting mechanics. It's really interesting to see how the deck builder mechanics played into the civilization game and i was particularly it it, it was very interesting because there was a few mechanics in there that really put pushed the boat out for me and, and made things quite really quite exciting number one mm. instead of you know the classic deck building you've got five cards you play five cards anything you haven't got you've got to get rid of like anything you have you've got left in the turn you got to get rid of whereas this had seven cards uh, sorry nine cards in a three by three grid and you get to pick a column and a row. So you've yep. still got five cards, but you can store cards for later. You can try and wheedle things so that things um, kind of come out where you want them. It also had this very slightly different to the other deck builders in the world where when you buy a new card, it goes on top of your deck. So it becomes important what order you do yeah, things in. Because yep. um, it's going to come out and fill in your in your nine, your three by three grid in a certain way. So you want things in a certain place, you know? Does, so, yeah. you know, you'd, you, you could argue that, you know, that that would be really interesting if you were like trying to compete with someone to try and get something before someone else um, to get things in a certain order. But then they, then they made the rules that you just do all of your stuff all at the same time. If anyone's got a chance to stop you, so it doesn't yeah. actually matter whether you do it in that order or the other order. Although there is another element where there was a horrendous amount of combos, which were impossible to predict most of the time. Um, and so, um, and so it made it very, very hard um, to, um, to, to kind of plan your turn significantly in advance because there was a, a crazy amount of combos, which were quite fun and exciting. And fun, so uh, fun for the person doing the combos. Who was doing it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But not, not fun, fun for the, the people. Watching them do it. <laughs> Yeah, and, and it was it, quite literally just... one of those yeah. things where you'll be watching. It'd be like, like, Lewis, oh, I can do this now. This enables you to get this. Then I can do this, and then the rest you're just chucking your cards off in the end, saying that's yeah. it, yeah. done. Although, so. and then you get to there. Uh, no, you get there. You go, then I can do this, and I can do that, which gives me that, which lets me go back and do that. Yeah. And you get to the end, you go, oh, hang on. No, if I do this first, then this card will come first. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Um, and so they. They released an expansion, which um, they put on Kickstarter. Well, they, they kickstarted an expansion. They yeah. yet to deliver it. But one of the yeah. generous things they did was they released... Uh, I say generous. I'm being a bit sarcastic. They are claiming they're going to they're actually deliver their Kickstarter this before this summer, which is very soon, uh, only a couple of years late. Um, but um, one of the things that they did release was the rule book, and the rule book contains some new rules for... Um, uh, it's it's a really novel and new concept. Somebody takes an action, then the next person takes an action, then another person takes an action, and you keep going round with one action at oh, a time. Oh, that'll never catch on. It, I, I can't see it working. <laughs> I can't see it working uh, for computer games in the uh, for, for for board games in the future. But this literally transformed the game to it something did. that was painful to something that is really really good like i was saying those because there was there's endless combos but now you can't guarantee you're going to get the combos it's like do i leave that card for later that somebody might buy but it's going to make me miss out on this combo and i'm going to earn less shit or do i and you give you care so much about what other people are doing and how they're doing it whereas before it was like a solo game but now you're like no don't buy that before i do oh, no, don't take that territory before I do, because that's going to cost me more if I do that, and you're going to take the bonus, and it just becomes a million times better and actually becomes really, really good. I cannot fathom why they released it in that previous form. I cannot, I just, it doesn't make any sense to me. Worst design ever. 
uh, that 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 rule that they put in. But now it is. I thoroughly recommend it, Joel. If you've still got yours, I would dust it out and I would go and play it with someone because it was really good. Yeah. See, that's it was real contentious. I mean, I played this back in one of the conventions when they were like, it was it wasn't even on Kickstarter. It was like. Yeah. Here's this game we're going to play. Do you want to try it? I said, yeah, and I like, played it, and I enjoyed it. But I said to the people at the time, the downtime is horrendous. I said, there was four mm. of us, and literally watching someone take all their actions at once was just bad. And I don't know why I still backed it, even with that. I just hoped that I was like, let's just see, maybe it get better. But no, when we played yeah. at the pub, it was even worse, especially when you're playing with Lewis. And not 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 and in a bad way. Lewis sees everything on the game, <laughs> even before the game's opened. He knows how it works, and he will manipulate every loophole and aspect in that game. And you're just sat there going, "Oh, gee, I didn't even see that." Oh <laughs> my, oh that's it, game's done. And the <laughs> other worst thing, because of um, uh, initiative, at the very end of the game. Um, I can't remember what happened with initiative again, how that worked out, but like he was able to basically dominate the board, especially in two player and say, I basically won. I still had my turn to do, but he said, I've done this. I've won this. And I'm just like looking at it. It's like, yeah, there's no point in me playing because he was able to do all his actions, conquer all this land and do whatever he needed. And I was just like, this, yeah. So I'm really glad. It wasn't even just the like they did it to fix the downtime, but when you play it, it it makes the game more exciting. It's, it's yeah. le- much less of a solo game, and like like I said, you you can see the combos, but you can't you can't guarantee you're going to be able to make the combos anymore. So it's like, yeah. do I risk do I risk going for the combo and missing out on that building that I need? I can't miss out on that building. Like that's far too good. I need that building in my yeah. It just it's just so much better. Like it's exciting. It's like you know like and like. You know, like Nick has pointed out, it's not the newest of concepts, and um, you know, and it may may well not catch on. But you know, taking turns in a board game can <laughs> add an element Genius. of drama. It is it is quite quite <laughs> clever. I mean, I was I've been very impressed. It's like night and day. I recommend you play it again, Joel. I reckon it could be up there with with your with your clanks. Yeah. See, I'm, that's the reason why I held on to it. Um... I was wondering because when you put this onto your onto the script, I was like, "Has he got the expansion? I ain't got the expansion. Where's my expansion?" No, I just got the rules. You just got the rules off, okay? Um, yeah. Because you can actually now buy all this on Meeple's Corner, so you can actually buy yeah. the new expansion, which us backers have not got yet, and don't know what? when we're going to get. I didn't, I didn't think they were, I didn't think they were selling it yet. No, it's all on Meeple's Corner. I thought, you just, I thought it was on order. No, it's there, Lewis. I'm looking at the page now. <laughs> you, you can buy the expansion. It's just the classic version. Jesus. It's not the mini version, but oh yeah, no minis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did see that. Is that the... uh, no? That's not with the new expansion. Those. I thought they just had yes. the African Empires is there. African Empires as well. Unbelievable scene. <laughs> <laughs> On the bright side, that means that it is probably in the country. Yeah. Yeah. Because it would all be in the, come in the same container. Yeah, I think they're possibly they they they're doing it so they can make funds to hopefully send it to us. Um, yeah, probably. So, so yeah, I, I'm gl- there, yeah, I'm glad you've said the change is for the better because do it. go and play it, Joel. Honestly, it is now really really interesting, and it's it's so interesting because it plays so different to every other deck builder, mm-hmm. but it's still a deck builder at, it, at its core. Um, and it's really interesting how because your cards go on top of the deck, you can play it in different ways. Yeah. Like uh, previously, yeah. like I've played it where you can just keep buying new cards, like better cards that go piling on your deck, um, mm. and then you kind of constantly kind of have to spend loads to keep doing that. Otherwise, you get to your rubbish cards and it all goes wrong. Um, or you can, you know, um, or you can just kind of play it as like a classic deck builder where you, where you, where you can try and clean out all the rubbish. Uh, cards and just have your good cards that kind of cycling through very quickly um so yeah. you can it's really quite interesting because you're because you're guaranteed to get one use out of that card and the other thing you can do as well is you can what's called reinforce 
So normally you clear away the five cards that you use, but there's another ability that lets you keep a card going right. in your mm-hmm. in your tablet. So you can keep saving card using it over and over again, so you don't have to wait for it to cycle. So the, there's like a few mechanics there that really manipulate the the the, the kind of traditional deck builder. Um, initially, I thought there was a bit too much, um, but actually now I really quite like I really quite like the the synergy between them all. Now it works a lot better, I think. Awesome. It's very yeah, good. Yeah, definitely looking forward to it now. Then. Yeah, yeah, highly recommend. Uh, my other game, and this goes back yeah. to the uh, Ever Thinks a Marvel game. <laughs> <laughs> I got my hands on Marvel Age of Heroes. So this is from Wiz Kids, and um, I purchased this from Meeple's Corner and uh, played it at the games day after Deep Blue. Um, boy, was it a big faff to open it there and then and sort it and organize it there's a lot of components it's a heavy heavy box um it was also set up so there's three i what i didn't realize there's three different scenarios in it and you have to set up decks and you also have to set up endings uh who you're fighting against um and then also you've got each player there's actually like six player boards so people can play like uh, their team, so you've got like Gambic and Rose and Cyclops and Jean Grey. Magic is on her own. Um uh, and there's a few others, I can't remember, Wolverine and Jubilee. So you've got to sort them all them out and get them set up. So it took probably a good forty five minutes to even set up the game, maybe a bit longer, and getting the rules down. Um and then going through it. It is Lords of Waterdeep but with Marvel. Right. But it, it is, is more thematic than Wards of Waterdeep. So in this, you're well, basically... I don't, I don't believe that. <laughs> How could it be more thematic than moving some cubes around the board? That, that so, seems very unlikely. So you're, the, the basic premise is, is you're, you're trying to build your team up strong enough to go off and fight them, the sub-bosses to then, once you've beat up the sub-bosses, go and fight the main boss. Um, and you need to be strong enough to do that because they need enough kind of, you need enough strength or mental or mm-hmm. willpower to defeat um, stats on the bosses uh, down the side. Uh, so you need to go off and go training. Um, either go to, like, um, I can't remember the locations now, but there's several locations where if you put your pawn there, you will you can move your stats up higher in strength or mental or will um you can you get a hand of cards and you can get allies now if you put an ally down uh, in a location um you put your token over the location area which means it's your card which uh, that ally will come with an uh, extra ability so if a person uses that ability to gain more resources and things like that you gain because they're using your card, same as Lords of Waterdeep, which is great. And there's actually some crossover, like um, below it is a leader. If you got other pawns of yours on X-Men cards, you gain six points at the end of the round for each one you've got on X-Men card, which is quite cool because there's a little extra way of scoring between it. And then also at the bottom, you've got team-ups. So the first part is you're basically placing your pawns out to um, build up your stats. The second part, if you put one of your pawns or two of your pawns or three of your pawns on the X jet, you can go off and do missions like defeat the bosses. And you can place your pawn on a team up card if there's one being placed, which you'll have to pay resources towards. But you usually get a better benefit out of it to then defeat the bosses which is really quite cool way so and again if you put that card down you put your token over that area to say it's your card and if someone else just uses that team up card you get a benefit you get a resource out of it um i really we all really enjoyed it we all quite got it after like doing a couple of rounds um and it plays a long time <laughs> probably longer than War- lords of water deep um <laughs> You're probably looking at a good three hours. Um, wow. 
It says 60 to 90 minutes on the box. It does. It, it does. Person. Take a, and we were first playing free player. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So um, that uh, people have been saying is there a way we can shorten this down because it's great, but it plays a long time. It kind of mm. needs a bit of a speed up at the beginning. So um, I don't yeah. know whether like um, having like initial everyone gets to play a, an ally card down to speed things up. Because that's the main yep. thing. There's nothing else there at the beginning of the game. It is just the basic areas like Wars of Waterdeep. Until people start putting yep. buildings yep. down, really opens up, oh, I can get more resources doing this, and mm-hmm. well, I can do this kind of thing. Um, and, um, yeah, I do kind of, I, I really enjoyed it. It was the aspect of defeating the sub-bosses and make, working your way through them um, because you had a sub-boss and if you defeated them, it said then go then pull out a lieutenant, and you had to defeat that. And then if you defeat the lieutenant, it says right, you can now reveal the final boss. And usually yeah. there are like the loads end. and loads, um, loads and loads of things you have to defeat. Um, and whenever you defeat an aspect on the boss, you score points. That's where all your points come from at the end of the day. Um, and it was actually quite close at the end of it. I um, did slip up and realised that I was putting my pawns out and then it got to it. It was like, oh, there's no room left on the X jet. Ah, crap. I can't. I can't do anything. And they're like, yeah, we wondered why you left, weren't going there because everyone was jumping <laughs> on it. And I was just like, yeah, I'm just going to go over here and get this. Oh, and now I've got loads of resources and nothing to do with them. So that was my blindsided test to it. But I think I still came second, luckily. But... um. But yeah, I enjoyed it. I'm look for, looking forward to my next play of it. Um, now I know the rules and yeah, but uh, yeah, it's yeah. just a time. Uh, okay, so we're going to do a review of Brass Birmingham. Okay, let's see if I can give you a bit of um, bit of background and um, set the scene a wee bit, um, really get you in the mood. Um, so. I want you to picture the scene. You've been living life far too healthily uh, for most of the 1700s. You've noticed the carbon dioxide levels in the air are just a bit too on the low side for your liking. You've decided what the UK really needs is some good old-fashioned burning of some coal to warm up the atmosphere and start trashing the earth at an earlier stage. Um, So um, it is, of course, uh, the dawn of the Industrial Revolution, and um, the game is Brass Birmingham, uh, which, of course, is Martin Wallace's second iteration, the second version um, of what was originally the 2007 um, Industrial Revolution Industry Sim, uh, which was quite a game in itself, which has now been renamed um, Brass Lancashire, um, in which you have to dig canals, build railroads, uh, find something to sell on these new founded transportation networks um, whilst um, it would seem getting uh, inordinately hammered on a whole brewery's worth of beer. So um, that's the game. Um, now, obviously, Martin Wallace is no stranger to um, some very big games um, in the board gaming world, Brass, um, and its 2018 um, revision has been slowly climbing the BGG top 100 for the last um, five years um, and is now sitting pretty at, at uh, number one. Uh, and uh, I guess what we're discussing today is, is it worthy of that position? Um, and t- to tell us a bit more about the rules, um, I'll hand you over to um, the reliable Nick. Thank you very much, Lewis. Very nice introduction. So Brass Birmingham, uh, the aim of the game is to score the most points. It's a victory point game. Uh, which, as Lewis said, you'll be doing by building industries uh, and building up your delivery networks. Uh, it's played in two eras. Uh, there's the canal era, which is from the 18th century, and then the rail era from the 19th century. Uh, each era will have a number of rounds, and each round will have players taking a number of turns. Um, each turn, a player can perform two actions out of a possible six types of actions they can take. Uh, every time you take an action, you have to discard one of the eight cards from your hand. Um, and you will, at the end of the turn, you replenish your hand up to eight. Uh, any money you spend during a turn is placed on your turn order marker, and that affects the turn order for the next round. At the end of a round, 
turn order is then set based on who spent the least money up to the most money. Uh, and then you gain a bit of income, which is usually not very much, uh, based on the income track. Players continue playing rounds in each era until the draw deck has completely run out and all players have played all their cards, at which point there will be a scoring phase where you score all your canal links in the first era and all your rail links in the second era and any flipped industry tiles. I'll explain what flipped are in a minute. Uh, the six actions you can do. Uh, build, where you can build an industry tile from your player board onto the map. Uh, network, where you're extending your canal or rail network. Develop, where you can improve the quality of some of your industries uh, on your player board to make better quality ones to build later. Sell, which is where you're going to sell beer to the markets to allow you to upgrade some of your industries. And then two small actions, which are, I guess, a loan. And it wouldn't be a Martin Wallace game without having to get loans for things, which gets you an influx of cash, but then you have to reduce your income. And then scouting, which just gets you a wild location, a wild industry card, which you can use later, which are better cards. Uh, using resources, very important part in brass. Uh, you need resources to build industries. Um, and to, they are generated when you build certain industries. Uh, coal and iron are the main uh, resources that you're going to use. Uh, they can be consumed by any player on the map. Um, they don't have to be yours. And in fact, you often want other players to spend your resources because it helps you flip your buildings over. Uh, and then there's beer as well. And beer is useful in breweries. Beer is useful for upgrading other types of industry. You sell it off and then you can pay to upgrade your industries. Um, as I said, when you use a resource, last resource on a tile, that tile gets flipped over, which will then score you income and points. Um, and so you do want to entice other players to consume the resource if you generated. Um, that generates you more money and more victory points. And if you manage to flip buildings in the canal era, it means they're going to score at the end of the canal era and at the end of the rail era. So that's a bonus for flipping them early on. Uh, building up your network is very important. You have to be able to deliver coal via the canal or rail network. Um, iron doesn't need a network, and beer only needs a network if it's your opponent's beer you're delivering. But they need the network for the coal and to extend your network to build other industries on. Uh, there is a market as well. You can buy coal and iron from if you need to. Um, in general, brass is a game about managing scarcity, where you are always struggling with the amount of money that you have and what you want to do. You need to plan a number of turns ahead to see what type of industries you want to build, where you want to build them, when you want to extend your network so you can access other players' resources uh, and just improve your chances of upgrading everything. Um, so there's a lot to manage um, in the game, but it's a classic Martin Wallace, so you, you need to manage your money very well. That's the key part of it. Um, but actions are very quick, so the game is pretty fast um, in playing your turn. It's very fast turn order. Um, setting the turn order is a very interesting way of um, encouraging or limiting what you want to spend in a round. Um, it's, it's often a very painful decision about whether you want to be first next turn and spend less this turn. Um, resources being communal is a very interesting way of um, adding that player interaction um, and being able to use anyone's network to transport the coal and possibly the beer. Uh, and it does really feel like you are struggling to make your way in the industry and just uh, nicely challenging and competitive game. So back to the other gents. Thank you, you go too. It's nice actually just to listen to other people take over a change. <laughs> so thanks for doing that. It's, I'm going to do my bit and discuss the components wise. So we're just looking at retail. This was at Kickstarter. That's how it was able to be brought back by Roxy Games. Um, and in it, they had lots of kind of extra bonuses where you had um, plastic pieces for the boats and uh, trains um, and these lovely iron clay uh, oh, poker, poker chips, chips for money. They but we'll look at the retail version. version because that's mainly what yep. people are going to be looking for. Brass Permanent is out of print at the minute, which is... Um, unfortunate. It's ironic it's for a making... game number one on the VG list. <laughs> it is. Um, I'm sure they want it in print. I'm pretty sure they're rushing to get it out oh, again. Yeah. So they've done a, and they've I done a do... few prints, and I mean, I I picked up on the second or third reprint, I think, and this mm. is before it got massive, and that was well, when they get that probably it came back in. Oh, it was the it was the middle of the lockdowns, wasn't it? The, between the two lockdowns, because yeah. I yeah 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 yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I brought, I picked up Brass Lancashire cheap from Meeple's Corner as one of his auction pledges. 
Um, and then I was always looking at Birmingham, but I was like, it's always 40 quid. I can never find it cheap. Um, and then I think I stumbled on it like for 35 um, at a Black Friday sale and just thought, right, just go for broke nice, on it. Yeah. I'm so glad I did because of its scarcity now. Yeah. Um, and it's nice to have both of them in my collection. Um, as I say, the component wise, if you're getting retail, it's going to be uh, cardboard chips for everything, really. Um, even the money's cardboard. It's decent quality cardboard. Art yeah, is beautiful. Yeah, functional. Yeah, yeah. It looks Art is good. absolutely it's a good looking game. Mm. I think compared Moody. to the oh, original, the people look a bit weird. The people that you are, <laughs> mm. people always look weird when they're in games. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, Especially the players. I, you barely even notice it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, what I did, and I, I mean, I've done this for multiple games. Is I picked up the iron clay poker chips uh, money system from Roxy Games themselves, and using that in this game really adds to it. Um, I think yeah. like the poker chip system or poker chip money adds to any kind of game. So because um, we used it for that? over, didn't we? I just yeah. Um, I mean, I, I'm quite happy to use a poker chip, but to me, like. In terms of the game, it kind of takes away. Like I think they're a nice component, they're nicer touch, but they don't. To me, they I don't associate poker chips with money. So right. I mean that's a bit odd, isn't it? Because they are money, but to me, you know, it's not the same as. You know, I know people can play about like paper money and power grid, but to me, at least that feels more like that's your money, isn't it? Yeah. Kind of like you know, um, yeah. And coins, I like a coin, even a cardboard coin. You know, it's nice and different, different sizes, different shapes, but. I mean, I don't get me the... wrong. I've got nothing against. I mean, they're nice to feel and they feel good, but I don't. Thematically, they kind of take take. I would I would say probably take away rather than add anything for me. I I was, I I don't. I mean, I do, I do own a set of poker chips, but I don't think I would ever bust them out to use in a game. Okay, I mean, I'm for this. I mean, because you've got to work out who's spent the most money. Looking at poker chips on the side and just saying, "Oh, that's five, three. Yeah. It does make um, it quicker, so yeah, it think. kind of looked at it with cardboard. It's like, oh, what's that money? Okay, so mm-hmm. I think you're talking yeah. seconds, not like hours. But oh yeah, 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 um... hey, yeah. No, no. I mean, it's just, I, yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't think it's you know ruin, it no. ruin my experience. Just as I say, I just don't. Yeah, I. Yeah, don't and some people don't complain think. about the uh, the artwork being a bit dark. It is very dark, but I think it covers the theme and setting of the game. Also, I mean, don't you need to flip? Don't you need to flip the board over? Isn't the board double sided? There is a light side, a, light side a daytime side. side of the light mm-hmm. side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, the day side is still quite dark, but it is it is still dark. lighter than the dark side. It's smoggy. Yeah. You need yeah. you need to have the thick smog. It's the theme. It's the theme. <laughs> um, and it's, I think I think it was it's perfectly usable. It's, I think it's a good looking game. Too I too like it. I think it's a good looking game. I mean, my thoughts, and then we're not going to dwell on this too much because uh, we want to keep it down to the time. I the, my first couple my first plays of it, I enjoy it, but I feel I'm a Lancashire person. I actually, and I hate to say this, I think it's way too cutthroaty um, with this beer aspect of. It is very cutthroat. Mm. I quite enjoy that actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. <laughs> You can only sell if there's beer available, and if like if it's not your beer, you've got to make sure it's connected. And people rush in, and then people take your beer, and it's like, oh, no, I. And there's been instances where it's got right towards the end of the game, and I'm planned it. I was like, oh, that's mine, and then someone just jumps in there and takes all the beer, and you just like, that's it. I could flat table flip now. I yeah, that is, and that I don't, was, and, that's Sam's point, isn't it? Because Sam prefers Lancashire. I think for that mm. reason, uh, that is so. That is a that is an it is an interesting point in that because um, I've played quite a few games and it's very common that the last few turns, you know, all you're going to do is just see if there's any trains available that you can afford and and just do those kind of like anything possible to do yeah. is kind of long gone. You can't really sell any more stuff and things like that. But um, um, yeah, and sometimes you know you've almost got nothing to do on your last you know, um, two or three actions sometimes. Um, but again, that's why you've got to kind of plan it in advance. But, um, but again, you don't know that until you've played it a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, so I can see you, I can see your point there. There, there, are, there are ways around it. And I've not played Lancashire to comment, but um, I really, really like the beer. I like that. I like that element of you can't just build and sell. 
you you don't know it if, is a push, um, kind of push your luck isn't it is mm-hmm. how long do you risk not using it yeah yeah to get a better sell and yeah, yeah. Is somebody else going to come and steal yep. your beer although at the same time that does the help you because it flips your brewery but you really wanted yep. the beer actually <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah, That's my good. thoughts. I mean, I, I, I've enjoyed the plays. And it's one of those things, when I first saw Brass in its original form, I was just like, ugh. And I <laughs> thought it was going to be a complex, like, um, economical game. Um, like, the, like even 18xx yeah. kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And I it shun- does kind of look a bit like it, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 And when Sam said gone. he backed it and done it, I was like, really? Okay, I didn't think it'd be your sort of game. And then he said he loved it. I was like, okay. Am I looking at this game wrongly at first? Oh. And then someone brought it. I think it, maybe even Sam brought it along and to one of the game nights, and he said, "That's I'm going to teach you it and play it." And I played Lancashire and absolutely loved it. I was like, "This is much more simpler than I thought. This is just yeah. play a card and do an action. Play a card, do yeah. an action, yeah. right?" Yeah, Next, yeah. Why was I thinking of this game so badly in the first place? Oh, this is great. So then, yeah, and I just like, well, yeah, I've got to look out for my own copy. Considering considering halfway through the game, you basically have to tear up the entire board and then start playing a whole new game with different really rules and costs yeah. and costs mm-hmm. of things. All your network <laughs> vanishes. Yeah, everything vanishes. <laughs> You've got to start again, and and not just like there's different costs for things, and they can go in different places. Like the rules yeah. essentially change. Um, it's remarkably simple and easy to pick up. Um, there's a couple of concepts yeah. within it that are a bit of a challenge. We've got to get ahead. Yeah, a small, some small some edge cases which I deliberately left out of the rules. Yeah, uh, which you do have to remember. There's, um, there's, there's, two, there's two different kinds of adjacency. There's like an adjacency mm-hmm. for like building, expanding out your network from where you are and building stuff, um, or there's like a there's like a being connected on the network type adjacency um, that lets you do trading and buying of, of, of goods along the network. You can use other people's mm. networks for that. And that's that's that has confused a couple of people when I remembering that. that. Yeah. Yeah. You, 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 uh, you plan your whole turn up to, to, to mm-hmm. expand your network there and you realise that they, actually yeah. you just need one more link because you're not connected to that bit. But that's it, and they and start it really you, like, you you can't build it there, it's not it's not your network. Yeah. But I'm connected there. It's like no, but that's not that's not your. And then you have to rethink canal. your whole yeah. turn again. Which yeah, yeah. <laughs> takes another five minutes and slows it a bit. But that's I think it. once you know mm. the game, that yeah. that will go away. It's actually yeah. remarkably, a remarkably simple game to get the hang of. Yeah. Like you know, relatively. Um, once you get and going, I like the car play. I I do like the fact that you, you know that what I didn't say in the rules is that the the only action that you actually care what's on the card is the building one because you it's either a location or an industry type mm. where you either. You can jump to a location, or you can expand your industry from where you are. Um, all the others, you don't have to. It doesn't matter what card you play, but you are then removing that option for playing later. So you can. There is an element of luck in what cards you get, and therefore where you can expand to. Um, but it's a very simple concept of just you play the card, you do the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, yeah. It's kind of um, it kind of slightly limits you or, or kind of yeah. you to make you to make the best of holds you back from going crazy. Uh, so I really like the card play, the way that you are limited by what cards you have to play for your build action, which is a location or an industry type. Um, but all the other actions, it doesn't matter what card you play, but you have to play that card. So mm. you're limiting what options you have in the future, um, and it's a very simple way of. Almost, you know, it's, it's, it reminds you what you're having to do, but it constrains your options um, about how you're going to expand. Yeah. Um, um, the other mechanic I really like, which I think is one of my favourite mechanics, I think in the game, is the setting the turn order based on how much money you spent. Yeah. Uh, in that in that round, um, and that means you could have this huge round of paying thirty pounds to play loads of stuff out, but then you're stuck in the last place for the next round. Yeah. Um, it, that's a really interesting way of setting turn order. I thought it was very clever. Mm. Well, so you always one... know someone's going to be wants to go first next round is when they go. I'm going to take a loan. Yeah, yeah. and then I'm going. To, <laughs> then I'm going to develop through these buildings. Like, uh oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What are they go. planning? Yeah, yeah. They got a big turn coming up. Yeah. Um, I think it needs commenting as well. Just how thematic. The game is as well like and historically accurate like i think as joel yeah. said um i do tend to see through 
games in terms of the kind of normally pasted on theme and just look at what is essentially the puzzle underneath it. But with Brass, it it doesn't seem to be like, it doesn't hit me as like a pasted on theme. It's like um, it's, it, everything fits historically. Like I think we had a game the other day um, when um, Nick, I think, had maxed out all his buildings of like that get you loads of points. And he had all the industries and he'd, be, and he'd trade them. He'd done really well. Um, and I had failed to properly sort out my brewery. So I was building no brewery. So it made trading stuff very hard. So I was like, well, um, I'm just going to build some trains then and uh, some, <laughs> some railroads and connect everything up. And I won hands like miles in it, like kind of in the lead because, and again, that fits so yeah. perfectly with the, with the, with the theme of the yeah. time. It was the people who owned the, the 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 railroads and the trains and the canals yep. who who they got of, all um, the money. <laughs> they got all the money, and the people who are the industry, they kind of did all right. Don't get don't get it wrong, but they they certainly weren't the kind of multi billionaires and like you know that kind of that happened from the from the railroads and things. So it was really interesting that they just kind of fit fit so perfectly um, thematically, mm. and and it does. It's really kind of um, really interesting how that kind of all fits together, you know. And then you know it, it's kind of the map always feels well balanced and works it doesn't mm. feel like one area is but well apart from birmingham like one area is particularly good or bad um apart from birmingham but that's deliberate um because it's brass birmingham um but the, the whole point is that it fits historically because it's birmingham was the kind of one of the major centers for um the yeah. industrial revolution and it also fits like you know you, they've got the cities of like northern england there and they actually have like the like the pottery kind of places that were uh, in the place of the pottery and you know in the coal mines yeah, that were in yeah. the place of coal mines and yet it all works like it's, it's still, still balanced all, it's amazing it's still yeah. balanced it still works of the game and you, there's no one area where you go oh shit i haven't got this card when you t when you look in your hand at the start that's game over it just doesn't work like that it's it works really well like it's it's very clever so complexity and time it's sort of touched uh, on complexity, didn't we? We've already talked about it. It's complex. there's a few little niche rules that um, are quite hard to get your, your head around. I mean, it seems very complicated, but you actually pick it up. It really isn't that. And it flows. I, mean, it's, it's, I think strategically, you have to think a number of turns ahead. Yeah. So that adds the you complexity. Can try. Yeah. But your actions on your turn are very very simple. Um, so it's got except, a, except a when you board game. The... Sorry, yeah, it's got a board game geek weight of three point nine out it's of five it is actually i, I don't think, think it's that, that at all no i think no. so i, I, mean, I that, think that, it's technically that's a medium heavy uh rating yeah and, uh, i think it's above medium but i think it's probably below medium heavy so um, yeah maybe three point medium, medium heavy if there was like a dick move rating on board game geek i reckon that would be <laughs> up high but it would be way high yeah yeah um dick, i don't but no. I th there aren't that many dick <laughs> moves because because the point is if somebody else uses your beer they're not doing it to screw you over they're doing it because they want it and unless they can see that you've got a number of nice benefit. industries to upgrade and then they use it first well, it is i mean oh, it yeah, is down to would, who goes first then they would, isn't it but then they would need to have um you know built that thing in, and then sold it, you know. In order yeah, to... it's often a, a serendipitous move to do that. Where yeah, you're doing I, something good for you, but also screwing someone I over. And you might anyone... choose to do that, but it is hard also... to deliberately do that. Yeah, I and also you know they, um, yeah, they, they still get the benefit for that for that um, brewery yeah. that they've built without using an action. Indeed. So that's still perfectly decent. I know they didn't get, to, but like I said, the, the actual points you get from those trades from actually mm. selling stuff is, is minimal compared to building your connections and the other ways you get points yeah and you yeah. know if you really want to do it spend less money you can orchestrate it so that you get your like you get the turn next before they can get the next turn to sell it you know it kind of yeah. works all that way and if or if, you know if they put an entire two actions on building something average spending a lot of money on it because they do cost a lot of money just to, <coughs> to use that beer that you wanted I mean, that you've probably you're probably in a better position anyway. It's really well balanced like that. Um, it's just you've got to yeah. think of it. It's, it's not it's not really a buying and selling game in Brass Birmingham. There's, there's, there's way more to it than that. Absolutely. Time wise, it's rated as sixty to one hundred and twenty minutes. Um, I'd say it was accurate. Yeah, 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 two hours. 
I mean, our yeah. game did take over three hours, but we did have some breaks. That was with the rules teach and breaks, yeah. Mm. So I think two hours, if, so. if you know the game, then easily two hours. Yeah, 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 yeah. Two, two, yeah. I'd and, say, and quicker with less players, I would say. Yeah, uh, I, I, I'd say it's comfortably a two-hour game. Mm-hmm. I don't think you, you'd do it much quicker than that. I mean, I guess no. if you really rush through it, but. So final thoughts. Is it worth the number one slot on Board Game Geek? And uh, my score, I've rated it as an eight. I've also rated it as an eight. Amazing. Ooh. And that's after one game with a caveat. So I've only played, played it the once. And but Lewis has rated it a as six because everything's a six <laughs> to him. Um, so I've played quite a few more games. I've played quite a few more games than you guys. This is probably a game that I've played played more than any other game, and particularly in recent memory. Um, And I have liked it and appreciated it more the more I play it. Yeah, and it's really interesting to see how completely different games turn out. On on kind of who you're playing with, what tactics someone's going for, and it's just it's really interesting. And I'm not bored of it yet. And I've probably I'm probably I haven't got an exact count of my plays. It's probably ten plus now into double figures. Mm. Um, right. And and I could keep playing it, and I could keep playing it and playing it. And every time, the more I play it, the more I appreciate how well designed it is, how well the theme fits in, how. Um, how fun it is, and I'm not, and I'm not bored of it, which is, which is quite, quite a thing to say, you know. With kind of and what have you scored board. it? Or have um, you scored it? Or what would you score it? Um, I would, I, I mean, eight would be a minimum. I'm debating whether I go to a nine with it. Ooh. Um, nice. Re- yeah. It's, it is a really, really good game. Um, let's, let's call it a. Yeah, I'm going to give it a nine. I'm going to give it a nine. Yeah. Brilliant. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, whether it's worth number one slot, I'm I'm glad it's not off Gloomhaven. Oh um, god, yeah. And we needed a new number one. Mm. Um, I did like the show it put on of like them fighting it out and it kind of <laughs> winning over. That backfired I don't think on it's. Over. Yeah, it really did. <laughs> um, I don't believe it's a number one game for Board Game Geek. It is definitely top 20 for me. Um, probably top 10 if I actually sat down and thought about it a bit more. But definitely top 20. I have enjoyed it. I don't, as I said, it can be a bit vicious. Like you've planned it all and then it comes to it and someone just jumps in there, takes the last of it, and then you're kind of screwed. It's like, like Lewis says, oh, I'll, I'll build a train here the train here and hopefully get some more points out of it so yeah me personally i don't think it is number one um worthy but i'm glad it's there yeah at the minute i'd agree with most of that i i think top 20 yeah easily um it's it's a good design um whether it's worthy of the very best game on board geek (laughs) i don't know i i don't think it's necessarily the best either um, there, there are certainly other games I would prefer to play, mm. but I would be very happy to play this if it's the one broken out. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I think I think I kind of had first say on this, and I, I think yeah, I, as I said, mm. I agree. Well, whether it's a number one, I I don't know. I certainly I have no problem with it being a number one. A lot of people feel very strongly about it. I think it's a very very strong, very good game. Um, um, and so yeah, like, like you say, it's got to be better than bloody Gloomhaven. Why? Why has it had this resurgence into number one? We know it's been out for like five, six years now, and all of a sudden it's just suddenly not. I think it's up. just been well, slowly. Creep. I think it has been creeping up. It has. It's yeah. And it's then suddenly been, it shot uh, up. It's just it's just one step at a time. It's been going up mm. over months and months. But you yeah, don't see that. There's loads really of games. Now. Don't forget that you know have um like come in and they get all the hype and the nonsense and then they shoot to the top and then they. Quick, over time they gradually go hell, down yeah. um, whereas this has kind of been gradually climbing for um, slow burn slow burn yeah it's kind of it's, and it's part like... of this problem is it's the same game as was released in 2007 so it's kind of almost had its time but now yeah it's, it's almost yeah. it was diluted a bit until enough new people came 
Yeah, it, was it wasn't new enough. Yeah, and exciting mm. enough. But then, you know, I think people, more and more people have played it and they've gone, this is really good. Yeah. And interestingly, Brass Lancashire is actually at number 20 at the moment. So they're both within the top 20. I've still not played mm. Lancashire. I really want to play it to see which I prefer. Yeah, I'll let's try as well. Next time. Yep. Next time. Definitely. Next time we meet. So, yes. Um, so that is our thoughts on Brass Birmingham or our review on Brass Birmingham. Much liked, much loved, and uh, definitely recommend playing it if you can find someone with a copy at the minute to play it. Indeed. Uh, I've got a sealed copy that's good. I'm going to use to pay off oh. my mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Any other business? We literally talked about one thing that we recommend you watch, and it's the new Picard series on Prime. Oh, yeah. Um, it's brilliant. Um, if you love uh, Next Generation series, you need to watch this. Um, so, and just wait for season three. It's outstanding. Um, I actually went and visited Bombay Burger that uh, Sam mentioned last time. He was Pem- gushing about it. Mm. Oh, do you know what? Sam is not lying. It was like out of this world food. I had a jar of frazy fries. They were a little bit spicy than I would probably manage, but I just couldn't stop eating them. So, um, <laughs> and I had the smash burger, which was great. Um, absolutely stunning. I will be giving them a review just to like big them up because it is amazing. I also had something nice. called a Bombay Lassie or Lasso Lassie, which is basically a yogurt milkshake with lot with flavoring uh, like mango flavoring and something else oh, that in sounds it sounds good he, he went through it and i said all right i'll give it a try i described it as a unique experience but i couldn't stop drinking it it was <laughs> so delicious it does sound really good yeah and i think it if you live in horrendous Fairy, do you think so oh mango and yogurt are oh, lovely Oh, Lewis, I mean... What, mango and yoghurt? I thought it says Jalfrezi. Oh, no, 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 that's on the fries. That's right, on the fries. Okay, sorry, I missed that. Spicy yoghurt, it would not be a good combination. Yeah, that's what I thought <laughs> no, you were saying. No, I was no. like, oh, hello, no, thank you. No, mango yoghurt, to cut through that spiciness would be, yeah, really good. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, there's a quick one. When my daughter was little, um, two, three, went to my brother's house, and uh, I said, can we um, cook up some, or can we heat up some milk so she can have it before bed? And they didn't have a microwave, so they'd done it in the pan, in a saucepan. Mm. And I, she drink, I gave it to her, and she drink, and she goes, hot. I was like, oh, is it? So I went and poured a bit more milk in it, gave it back to her. Hot. I was like, is it? Just put a bit more milk in it, gave it back to her. Hot, hot. I was like, it's not, it can't be hot. So I tested it. I said, it's pretty much cold. What are you on about hot? So I tasted it. It was spicy hot. Because my, <laughs> my sister-in-law is Thai. And they cook lots of the spice in this pan they use to kick the milk, oh, which then soaked yeah. in all the spices that were still in, <laughs> like, in the sides of the pan. So she was having spicy milk. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's such a thing. It's not great, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, been there, done that. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah. Bombay okay. Burger in Plymouth. Um, Try it. Uh, yeah, my only other business... Um, just to know, I've I've just this or today finishing um, the last of the four series of Wayfarer series books by Becky Chambers, which are um, science fiction. Uh, yeah, it's, it's science fiction books, um, but they are books that are very much focused more on the relationships developing between these multi-species crews um, rather than the adventure. And there are, there are adventures that happen, um, but it is more on character development than adventure. Um, really, really good author. Um, I really enjoyed them, all four of those books, um, especially the second one. I think it's my favourite, The Closed and Common Orbit. But this, the first one's The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, um, which came out, it was 2015, so it was quite, it was quite a big release then. Um, and I'm just finishing her last one, The Galaxy in the Ground Within. Very, very interesting take on science fiction. Um, I would highly recommend. Hmm. All right, look at those. Mm. Uh, see if they're on Audible. Yeah. So, so that's it. So that's the show. Hopefully I can cut this right down and be a little bit more shorter than it is recorded. Um, 
<laughs> Next episode yes. will be actually our preview show for the UK Games Expo because that's just around the corner. So Ooh, um, crazy! It's so we'll be so doing close. that, and I yeah. might see if there's some guests to come along um, to join us. Um, so yeah, and then the show after that is actually our 100 episode. So it won't be a review. Probably actually might be a review of the whole podcast. And um, amazing. Yeah. The best podcast I've ever heard. <laughs> Job done. Next. That's one next. episode. <laughs> so that's the uh, next couple of podcasts coming out. So stay tuned for that. Um, so, yeah, thank you guys for uh, joining me on this. Hope you've enjoyed it. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, yeah. Thanks very much. So, thank you for listening to the podcast. If you want to leave any comments, or suggest any top three games or review games that we can do in the future then drop along to our social media sites and leave it anywhere there that i might not discover until later on in life <laughs> but you can always try uh, our discord channel is active go along to that that'd be lovely if you can drop into that and uh yeah find all this details in the show notes below and everything else we talked about thank you guys for joining me for giving up your time say good night Good night. Good night. I love the, the light. It's like we're traveling across halfway around the world for it. But anyway, good night, everyone. See you on the next episode. Bye.